Welcome to the World of Married. With Children, the TV series that started in 1987 and became a hit with its bold humor and unique take on family life. This show follows the Bundys, a family that breaks all the rules of the typical TV household. Al, the grumpy shoe salesman, his wife Peggy, and their two kids, Kelly and Bud, invite us into their home for laughs and surprises. Now, you might think you know the Bundys, but there are plenty of funny, shocking, and even sad facts about the show that are still coming to light. Did you know that the show was almost called Not the Cosbys, which hints at just how different it wanted to be from the wholesome family image of the time? Or that the famous couch scenes were a nod to the simplicity of family life? As we dive into these facts, we also want to hear from you. What is your most memorable moment from Married? With children. Maybe it's an episode that had you laughing out loud or a line that still sticks with you today. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We love hearing how this show has touched your life. Keep watching because there's more to come. We come to this conclusion, love and the television series Married. With children started in 1987 and quickly became known for its bold humor and unique take on the average American family. The show was different because it showed a family that was not perfect or wealthy, which was not common on TV at that time. This made many viewers feel like the show understood their real lives, and they could laugh at the funny, yet tough situations the characters faced. The show's influence is still seen today in many comedies that portray families in a more realistic and humorous way. It broke new ground and made it okay for TV shows to talk about issues and family problems in a funny and sometimes exaggerated manner. This is why even now, years later, people still watch and talk about Married with children. It reminds us that it's okay to laugh at the ups and downs of family life, and it connects with new generations who find the honesty and humor in the show refreshing and entertaining. The series continues to be relevant because it changed how we see families on television and made room for more stories about real life that are both funny and true to life. Me too. <laughs> in a memorable moment, when Kelly takes on a job at Teveland, children approach Jefferson DRC for an autograph, mistaking him for a character from Happy Days. They also question if he appeared in The Love Boat, which he refutes, despite the actor's real-life roles in both shows. Meanwhile, David Faustino, known for his role in the series, joined his brother Michael Faustino in a MySpace series inspired by Neil Strauss' book. In another career move, David Garrison, who played a key role, departed the show to return to his Broadway roots. <laughs> Even the, the dark, mossy side. <laughs> In crafting the essence of the show, the creators opted for a unique approach. They formed traditional dialogue in favor of a sound that would instantly convey the show's spirit. The result was the unmistakable sound of a toilet flush in the opening scene, setting the tone for the humor that would define the series. This choice resonated with the audience, aligning perfectly with the everyday, unpretentious comedy that was to come. The character central to the show's humor, Al Bundy, has a backstory with his birthday set on November 7, 1948, grounding his personality in a specific era. Meanwhile, Katie Sagal, portraying his wife, infused her role with a touch of satire. She chose 1960s inspired attire to mimic and mock the era's typical housewife image. Her personal touch, a red boofin wig, became an integral part of her character after it was well received during her audition, further defining the show's distinctive style. She proud of us, big guy? <laughs> <laughs> Katie Seagull transitioned from her role as the outlandish Peg Bundy to embodying Kate Hennessy, a more grounded character in a later sitcom. Amanda Bierce, known for her portrayal of Marcy Rhoda's D.R.C., expanded her talents behind the camera by directing episodes of the show. Tim Conway, remembered for his voice work alongside Ernest Borgnine in a well-known animated series, mourned the loss of his mentor and friend in 2012. Borgnine's career spanned over six decades, leaving a lasting legacy in the entertainment industry. Typecasting can be a significant hurdle for actors, as Ed O'Neill discovered after his long-running role as a sitcom father. His association with the character was so strong that it even influenced casting decisions, as seen during his audition for State of Grace, where an unfortunate coincidence with a promotional billboard may have cost him the part. Meanwhile, the show itself didn't shy away from nodding to the cast's other work, 
cleverly referencing O'Neill's film Dutch in a subtle yet visible manner during a scene set in a video store. Additionally, Tim Conway shared insights into his positive experiences working with Ernest Borgnine, highlighting the camaraderie that can develop between actors on set. Choose. <laughs> he was the best. Is that him? Christina Applegate faced a personal health challenge when she announced her multiple sclerosis diagnosis in 2021, a condition she had been privately battling for some time. In a lighter revelation from her past, she shared an amusing anecdote about a photo shoot where her natural green eyes were digitally altered to blue, showcasing the sometimes surreal aspects of celebrity image management. Meanwhile, Ed O'Neill's casting as the iconic Al Bundy was initially met with resistance from Fox executive Barry Diller. Despite Diller's initial objections and blunt commentary, the show's producers stood firm on their choice, a decision vindicated over time as Diller himself later acknowledged O'Neill's perfect fit for the role. These behind-the-scenes insights offer a glimpse into the challenges and quirks encountered by the cast of this enduring show. But it's not just the car, it's the precious items that it held. My eight-track tape player. Behind the scenes, the show had its share of unique facts. Viewers occasionally spotted Katie Seagull's natural brunette hair peeking from beneath her character's red wig. In a poignant turn of events, the actor Divine passed away just before filming his guest appearance as Uncle Otto, leading to the episode being dedicated to his memory. Additionally, Tim Conway, to distinguish himself from another actor, adopted Tim as his professional first name. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the off-screen realities that shaped the show's production. In a crossover nod, a character from another series humorously suggests a hair color change to a fugitive, referencing her well-known earlier role with a fiery hairdo. Meanwhile, the full name of the son in the Bundy family is revealed as Budrick Franklin Bundy, adding depth to his persona. In a twist of fate, the role of the Bundy matriarch was almost played by a comedian who decided to pursue a different path, leading her to shape a sitcom around her own brand of humor. These snippets offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes decisions and character details that contribute to the storytelling of a beloved show. Nope, get lost. <laughs> well, enough male bonding. <laughs> I guess I'll... Casting decisions can often make or break a television show, and for this particular sitcom, the lead actor's understanding of his character was evident from the moment he auditioned. His portrayal of the weary family man was so convincing that it became clear he was the perfect fit for the role. This actor's commitment was further demonstrated by his consistent presence throughout the show's entire run, appearing in every single episode. The show's appeal crossed cultural boundaries, inspiring an Argentinian adaptation that not only replicated the original's humor, but also garnered significant acclaim, securing multiple awards during its two-year run. Feeling spry. The bank was crowded, so I sent a teller on a break. I was on top of the... In the role of Peg Bundy, Katie Seagull was easily recognizable by her red hair, a feature achieved with a wig. The suburban residence featured in the show's opening and closing visuals is an actual home located in Deerfield, Illinois. Contrary to what was often mentioned, Al Bundy's prized car was not a Dodge, but a 1972 Plymouth Duster, a detail that adds a layer of authenticity to the character's attachment to his vehicle. In a surprising turn of events, the show's humor resonated well with German audiences, leading to the creation of a local adaptation titled Hilf, Main Family Spent. This version featured the Strunk family and was a direct translation of the original scripts and jokes. Despite the initial success, the German network RTL discontinued it after just one season. Within the show, the character Al Bundy often found solace in watching his beloved fictional western series Psycho Dad. Off screen, an interesting age-related twist occurred. Although Jefferson D.R.C. is portrayed as younger than his wife Marcy, the actors Ted McGinley and Amanda Bear share the same birth year in 1958, with McGinley being the elder by a few months. Damn. <laughs> And Bob Rooney scuba dives it into the In the midst of her junior year, Christina Applegate achieved her general educational development certification with excellent results. Within the show, Kelly's character is often seen enjoying Garfield comics, 
a series that resonated with many young readers during its peak popularity in the late 80s and early 90s. Meanwhile, Al's character finds his greatest enjoyment in classic Western films, with Hondo being his top pick, followed closely by Shane. Or Eskimo. <laughs> Take a guess. In the early stages of the show's development, a professional television viewer suggested that the producers demonstrate the family's deep affection for each other amidst their harsh interactions. This feedback was met with a candid response from co-creator Ron Leavitt, who expressed his frustration with the state of television. Meanwhile, Katie Segal, known for her role in the show, had an earlier career moment when she was selected to sing backup for Bob Dylan, only to be let go shortly before the tour commenced. Additionally, the show's humor included names with double meanings, which resonated differently with British audiences, adding another layer to the comedy for those viewers. If you could, would you just give me a sign? Any sign at all. In a nod to nostalgia, the lead character's names were borrowed from a 1950s radio show, reflecting a tradition of drawing inspiration from earlier media. Christina Applegate, known for her role in the show, faced a challenging period in 2005 when an injury on stage led to the temporary cancellation of her Broadway musical. However, the show was revived and she triumphantly returned to the stage, earning critical acclaim and a Tony Award nomination. Across the Atlantic, an attempt to recreate the magic with a British version titled Married for Life fell short, lasting only a brief period on air. This adaptation struggled to connect with audiences and was discontinued after a short run their heads but still had time to listen to their stories to laugh with them to... this show carved a niche for itself in television history by becoming the longest running american primetime scripted series of its time surpassing the record previously held by murder she wrote and maintaining this status until the series concluded it was a milestone for the fox network marking the first time one of its series achieved such longevity a title that was later taken over by murphy brown in an interesting crossover, cast members Christina Applegate and David Faustino guest starred in an episode of 21 Jump Street, specifically season 2, episode 15. Initially, key cast members including Katie Segal, Ed O'Neill, and Christina Applegate were skeptical about the show's chances of success. Despite their reservations, they were drawn to the humor in the pilot script and decided to join the project, anticipating an enjoyable experience. Quite a grotesque little tableau, eh, Peg? <laughs> In the initial stages of the show, different actors were cast for the roles of the children. However, the producers decided to replace them, believing other opportunities would be a better fit. This led to the roles being recast with Christina Applegate and David Faustino, who became the faces associated with these characters. Interestingly, the careers of the original actors did not extend much beyond a few years after this change. The show also had an unexpected fan in Sir Roger Moore, known for his portrayal of James Bond. He enjoyed the series and had a personal connection through his friendship with the director Boris Segal, whose daughter played one of the lead roles. A notable non-human cast member was Buck the Dog, who was part of the series from its inception until the 10th season. The dog's departure from the show was planned, aligning with a storyline prediction made years earlier. Buck passed away in 1996 at the age of 13. It would mean a lot to me if you would come and hear me speak next Saturday. Oh, I'd be delighted. Thanks. <laughs> David Garrison's passion for live theater led to his exit from the show, with a narrative crafted to depict the growing distance between his character Steve and his on-screen wife Marcy. His parting gift, a large mugshot with a humorous caption, reflected his theater roots. Despite leaving, he made guest appearances in subsequent seasons, each time with Steve embarking on a new career path. The series, set in Chicago, shared its setting and broadcast period with another sitcom, Family Matters, which concluded a year after this show. Recently, Christina Applegate spoke candidly about the challenges she faces due to her multiple sclerosis diagnosis, including significant weight gain and mobility issues, necessitating the use of a cane for support. The one I need to complete my collection. Oh, you collect classic American... In a twist of fate, a comedy series gained popularity after a campaign to cancel it backfired, leading to increased viewership and establishing the network as a contender in the television industry. The cast showed gratitude by annually sending flowers to the campaign initiator. 
In Personal Triumphs, actress Christina Applegate overcame breast cancer with early detection and treatment, resulting in a successful recovery. Meanwhile, actor Matt LeBlanc embraced fatherhood to his stepchildren, sharing his family experiences in a candid interview. These events highlight the unexpected outcomes and personal milestones associated with the series. When the show first aired, its reach was limited due to the broadcaster's smaller market coverage. However, as episodes entered syndication, they reached new audiences, effectively giving them a fresh viewership. This expanded exposure significantly increased the popularity of the cast, particularly David Garrison, who noted a surge in his fan base even after his departure from the show. The dynamics among the cast were not always smooth. Ed O'Neill shared that his relationship with Amanda Bears changed over time, leading to a lack of communication post-show. Despite initial mutual respect, differences arose, and these were highlighted by O'Neill not being invited to Bears' wedding. The character Seven's sudden absence from the show became a running gag, with subtle references made to his disappearance in later episodes. This included visual gags such as his face appearing on a milk carton, symbolizing his unexplained vanishing from the storyline. It's not right to stomp on adults. Besides, it wouldn't hurt you to earn your own keep. Well, you're included in this too, Pat. In the landscape of television comedy, it's not uncommon for the actors' real-life families to cross paths with their on-screen characters. This was the case with the show where Steve's character was given the middle name Bartholomew. The series often welcomed relatives of the main cast for guest appearances. Notably, Ed O'Neill's wife, Catherine Russoff, graced the screen twice. David Faustino's brother, Michael, also joined the cast on a few occasions. Adding to this family affair, Christina Applegate's mother, Nancy Pretty, and Katie Sagal's brother, Joey Sagal, made their appearances known. Furthermore, Elaine Hendricks and Juliet Tablack, who were romantically linked with David Faustino at different times, were part of the show's extended family. The opening credits of the show feature The Buckingham Fountain, a well-known landmark in downtown Chicago, setting the stage for the comedic events to unfold. In the landscape of television comedy, a group known as National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood humorously highlights the battle of the sexes. Early on, viewers could spot a unique piece of decor in the form of Motorhead's snaggletooth character adorning Kelly's bedroom door. The show's conclusion came not from a drop in viewer interest, but due to financial decisions. Local stations found the cost of syndication rights prohibitively expensive, with prices reaching $1 million per episode, leading to a request for cessation of production. Maybe I can help. You see, I hate to tell you this, Dad, but... In a unique family dynamic, Katie Sagal's real-life younger brother, Joey Sagal, made guest appearances on the show, bringing a touch of reality to the fictional world. Ted McGinley, known for his role in the series, balances his acting with family life, sharing two sons with his wife, Gigi Rice. Their names are Beau Martin McGinley, born on May 25, 1994, and Quinn Thomas McGinley. Meanwhile, David Garrison holds the distinction of being the first actor cast for the show, yet he stands out as the sole regular cast member who decided to part ways with the production as it continued its successful run. Not the Angora sweater wearing, pointy breasted woman who will frost my Duncan Hines cakes while burying my 2.6 In the landscape of television, spin offs are a common occurrence, and this show was no exception. It inspired a spin off titled Top of the Heap, which was later known as Vinnie and Bobby. Two other episodes, Enemies and Radio Free Tremaine, were considered for spin offs, but ultimately remained part of the show's original run. Enemies explored the dynamics of love and conflict among friends while Radio Free Trumaine followed the adventures of two unique disc jockeys at a college radio station. An interesting tidbit is that Peggy's on-screen birthday coincides with actor Ed O'Neill's real-life birthday, April 12th. Despite initial reservations about O'Neill's ability to transition from drama to comedy, his audition dispelled any doubts, leading to his casting as Al Bundy. This role became so synonymous with O'Neill that it later posed a challenge for him to secure dramatic roles showcasing the lasting association between actor and character in the public's mind. Feet. Tell her you got the ring from Al Bundy. In the early days of the show, David Faustino, who played Bud, 
tested his fame at a mall with the show's merchandise, but remained unnoticed. Christina Applegate, known for her role as Kelly, had to wear a wig after changing her hair for a movie part. Ted McGinley, who joined the cast as Jefferson D.R.C., had previously portrayed an alternate version of Peggy's husband in a what-if scenario, showcasing his versatility as an actor. Jefferson, you went past the safe place. <laughs> in a twist of fate, the actress behind the character Kelly shared her real-life birthday, November 25, 1971. The show's final curtain call was on May 6, 1997, but the end came as a surprise to the cast. Ed O'Neill found out while on vacation from strangers who had read the news, and Christina Applegate heard it through friends. The Bundy residents had two different addresses mentioned throughout the series 9764 and 9674 Jeopardy Lane, adding to the show's quirky inconsistencies. Pair of breasts. <laughs> In the world of television comedy, connections behind the scenes can be as interesting as those on screen. Tim Conway, known for his comedic talent, was once part of a comedy duo with Ernie Anderson in Cleveland before his career took him elsewhere. Humor also extended into the character's preferences, with Al's choice of reading material being a magazine called Big Uns, reflecting his comical and exaggerated persona. This running gag was expanded to include variations like Black Big Uns and Cub Uns read by characters Griff and a parody of Fidel Castro respectively, adding a layer of humor through the show's run. Personal lives of the cast often intersected with the show, as seen with Katie Sagal's pregnancies. Her first pregnancy was incorporated into the storyline, but was tragically written out due to a miscarriage. The subsequent pregnancies in 1994 and 1995-1996 were kept off screen, showcasing the show's adaptability and respect for Segal's privacy during these times. Ah, <laughs> oh, Miss Wanker, your card, please. Oh. Jello. 